Hey Disney fans, welcome back to my channel. The subject of today's video is Disney pins. If you've been watching my channel even a little bit lately, you will know that right now I am very deep into the Disney pin trading and Disney pin collecting hobby. And I have received so many comments and emails and Instagram messages um, and requests from you guys to answer various questions, everything from how do I know if a pin is fake to how do I get started in the pin trading hobby or what is it like to trade in the parks etc and I wanted to kind of give just a little beginner's guide to the whole world of Disney pin trading and Disney pin collecting today so here's how this video will work I have broken down the world of pin trading and pin collecting into kind of three really basic categories those categories are pin trading in the parks um, open edition wrap pins, the pins that you would buy in the parks, and also the kind of mystical world of limited edition and rare and very expensive pins. So I'll give you kind of a basic rundown on those three categories. I'll also give you some of my best tips and advice along the way. And at the very end of this video, I will include a handful of resources so that you can kind of dig in and do more research and um, get further information on your own. I also just want to preface this by saying that I am by no means an expert at Disney pins. I've kind of been lurking and observing the world of pin trading and pin collecting for a few years. Recently I've gotten a little bit more active about it, but I'm definitely not an expert. There are people who know a lot more than me. However, I do think I've got a handle on a few things that if I had known those things earlier, my pin trading collecting experiences would have been a little bit better. Okay, so I want to start this video talking about what I kind of feel is the first level or the first tier of Disney pin trading, and that is pin trading in the actual Disney parks. Now, if you've been to the Disney parks, you may have noticed as you walk around that there are cast members or employees wearing lanyards or holding little um, pin boards that have all kinds of cute little pins on them, and that you are able to actually, as a guest in the parks, go up to a cast member and trade your pin for one of theirs. This is kind of the gateway drug of pin collecting for many people, and the pins that you can find in the parks for trade are typically the least expensive to purchase, but also the least valuable when it comes to tradeability. If you visited any Disney Parks gift shops, you will notice that everywhere there are racks full of kind of pin booster packs that look like these ones. And this is kind of Disney's way of getting you hooked. For a relatively inexpensive price, you get, you know, five or six or seven pins. And you can also buy a lanyard. Sometimes the lanyard comes with its own booster pack. And then you can keep the pins that you like, but you're encouraged to go around and trade with either the people in your party, like your sister or your parents. Um, or you can walk up to cast members and look at the pins that they're wearing and you can offer one of your pins that you are not interested in keeping for one of theirs that you would like to collect. Typically the pins that you will find on cast member lanyards are other booster pack pins that other guests have traded or pins from uh, mystery packs or mystery boxes that guests have traded or you can also find pins called hidden Mickey pins and there are these usually quite small pins and they have like a little hidden Mickey mouse on them. Let me show you an example right now. So this is one of the current hidden Mickeys in circulation. It's a pineapple shaped as a Mickey head, and you can see this tiny little hidden Mickey down here in the corner, and that's how you know that it's a hidden Mickey pin. And also on the back of hidden Mickey pins, there will actually be a stamp that says hidden Mickey, and it might say number one of six. So it would be like the first pin in that series of hidden Mickey pins. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but basically they have a hidden Mickey uh, image on the front, and there's a stamp that says hidden Mickey on the back. Now there are basically two ways to get hidden Mickey pins. You can get them by trading with cast members inside the Disney parks. They are actually released by Disney onto cast member lanyards for the sole purpose of trading and for enticing you to buy pins to trade with. Or you can also buy um, little like mystery packets of hidden Mickey pins. I don't have any of those on me right now, but I'll try to show you an image um, right here if I can find a good picture of them. 
So basically you can either purchase them in little mystery packs or trade for them on lanyards and that is how you collect them. Now this is a really super fun activity to engage in in the parks. Cast members are really friendly, they're generally very happy to trade with you and you can trade any Disney licensed pin. Any pin that says copyright Disney on the back or that has a Disney pin trading stamp on the back for any cast member lanyard pin. You will rarely get turned down unless your pin is in really really bad shape. However, there is a big pitfall to pin trading in the parks. Unfortunately, the small hidden Mickey pins and the booster pack pins and the mystery pack pins are very simple and they're very small. They're usually not overly complex or difficult to make. So these pins are unfortunately often faked. Um, what happens is, third parties steal or buy molds from actual Disney pin factories and they produce a bunch of like cheap knockoff imitation pins and they sell them for really cheap on eBay and unfortunately people buy fake eBay pin lots and those pins make their way into the parks and onto cast member lanyards. It is very, very hard to tell these days which pins are fake and which pins are real. Um, the companies that make those cheap ones have unfortunately gotten really good at faking pins and sometimes it's almost impossible to tell. So my best advice for trading in the park is trade for pins that you think look nice and that you really like so that if it does turn out to be a fake you're not that sad about it. <laughs> I'll tell you right now that I do have a few pins in my collection that I really like that I'm pretty sure are fake, um, but I keep them anyway because I think they're cute, they look pretty nice, and I'm kind of using them as placeholders for when and if I do find the real pin. An example of this is this little Marie Mickey head pin. It looks pretty nice, but on the top you can see that there are some rough edges around the ears. And also the material that this pin is made out of actually feels a little bit lighter to hold than some of the authentic Disney pins, and that's how I'm pretty sure that this one is a fake. But this is actually a pretty cute pin, and I love Marie from the Aristocats, and I'm going to keep this until I find an official one, or I'll just, you know, wear it around in my jean jacket, and no one will really be able to tell the difference from far away. So in a nutshell, trading inside the Disney parks is a great way to get started on your pin collection, but be aware that it's very possible that you will get a fake or a scrapper pin, and also please, please do not buy your trader pins in those huge lots on eBay. Look for booster packs like the ones I just showed you. They look like this. You can get these in the parks, or sometimes you can find these a little bit cheaper on eBay. Um, I have heard that sometimes these are faked, but it's a lot less likely that they will be faked if they're on their cardboard back and sealed in package. And if you're into mystery pin packs and mystery pin boxes, which I obviously am, um, you can trade any pins that you don't want to keep uh, inside the parks with cast members. So these are really good traders as well. The second category or second tier of pins, in my opinion, are open edition pins or rack pins. These guys. These probably look really familiar because they are sold everywhere you look all over the Disney parks. It usually consists of one pin, sometimes two, on a single card backing. They're usually hanging on racks, hence the name rack pin, and they are not limited edition, so they're kind of available everywhere and in mass quantities. Now you can find rack pins for pretty much everything under the sun. You can find rack pins of your favorite characters, you can find rack pins of your favorite attractions, your favorite fireworks, work show, your favorite Disney hotel, and I think these are awesome to collect if you want to keep your pins for memory making or kind of souvenir collecting. I tend to purchase a few rack pins on every single trip that I take to Disney as souvenirs. I'll often pick up pins that feature my favorite characters or my favorite movies. So these are two of mine. They are both from Zootopia, which is one of the things that I collect. I'll usually pick up a rack pin that is for the resort that we stayed at. So I've got a small collection of Disney resort hotel pins so I can remember where I stayed and when. So for example, I have this Disney World Boardwalk pin um, and this is the hotel that we stayed in when we were there this past May. Or I will sometimes purchase a rack pin to remind me of a special occasion or an experience that I had that was unique. For example, I have this one from the Disneyland 60th anniversary celebration, which I was able to attend right on the tail end of the anniversary. And there's a look at that one. 
I think that these open edition and rack pins are a great way to begin your pin collection and a great way to kind of have a little album of Disney memories in pin form. They're small, they're not overly expensive, they're easy to take home in your luggage, and there are so, so, so many of them out there that you can usually find just exactly the pin that you're looking for to commemorate your special trip or your favorite character or a new Disney movie that came out that you liked. What you should know about rack pins is they are not rare. For the most part, if they are available on a Disney shelf somewhere, they are available and many, many, many people already have it. So they're not particularly tradable, they're not particularly valuable, maybe in 10 or 15 years once the pin has been retired and um, they're kind of harder to find, it might gain some value. But in general, these are kind of not overly collectible pins in terms of their monetary value. However, I love them as I said, for keeping memories, um, for gifting to friends. Certainly you can trade with people open edition pin for another open edition pin, but if you're looking to get things that are more rare, usually the open edition pins don't get you very far. And now the third category or third tier of Disney pins that I'll talk about are limited edition pins and rare Disney pins. Now, this is where this hobby can get very, very, very expensive very quickly. Um, limited edition pins are usually highly tradable. Rare pins can go on eBay or on Facebook groups for anything from, you know, $25 to $250. I've seen some go for like $800. It can be a really, really crazy collecting rabbit hole. And um, here's the deal. You can buy limited edition pins in side of the Disney parks, you will usually find them kind of in a glass case, so behind some protection so people aren't just walking off with them. Um, sometimes they're held behind the counters of various Disney stores, and usually in each park there's kind of like a Disney pin trading hub that also has a lot of Disney pins available for sale. These limited edition pins often mark special events or are part of special commemorative series or um, they'll come in like limited edition mystery boxes. All kinds of limited editions are available and they might be like limited edition 500, they might be limited edition 3500, meaning there's 3500 of those pins available. Or sometimes you'll even see um, in magical framed sets, you'll see like limited edition 15. And those are really crazy hard to get a hold of. Depending on how rare your limited edition pin is or how old and rare your retired rack pin is, some of these pins can be very highly valuable. However, they're really only worth what somebody else, some other trader, will pay for them. So there's not really an objective way to find out what is the value of your pin. Um, but if you browse eBay, if you browse like completed pin listings on eBay, you can generally get a good idea for whether or not a pin is valuable. Now, the problem with breaking into rare and limited edition pin trading is that you have to have some in order to trade for them, which means you'll probably have to find a way to purchase limited edition or rare pins either in the parks um, or from an online seller and be careful because there are counterfeit rare pins out there as well, so you just gotta keep asking questions and keep your eyes open. Um, and then there are tons of Disney trading Facebook groups, you can look um, hashtag Disney pin trading on Instagram, and you will see people with all of their traders up. Um, there are also people that are sometimes trading at little tables in the parks, and that is kind of where you get down the big rabbit hole of crazy, crazy Disney pin collecting. Now, because there are literally tens of thousands or maybe even hundreds of thousands of different Disney pins out there in circulation, most collectors narrow their collections down to a few different categories. They'll choose their favorite character, or they'll choose their favorite attraction, or they'll choose something really, really obscure and focus on collecting that as kind of their pin trading niche. That way they don't go too crazy and just collect every single thing in sight. For example, I collect Snow White, but there's a lot of Snow White pins out there, so I really just look for the pins that I feel are special, um, not just a generic Snow White pin, but the ones that are really pretty in my opinion. Um, I also collect Zootopia, and I also collect Belle, but I only collect Belle when she's wearing her blue peasant dress. 
dress. So because there are so many bell pins out there in circulation, I have to narrow it down to just blue dress bell. And you know what? There's a lot of those out there too. Limited edition pins and rare pins are also sometimes very nice in quality. You can find pins that move, you can find pins that open and close, you can find pins that spin, all kinds of cool things. Let me just show you a couple of mine that I randomly grabbed out of my collection. So this is a limited edition pin of 1200 that I picked up last year during the holidays. This is the Pop Century Resort specific holiday pin. There's Minnie Mouse and she's got her little Pop Century icons next to her. You can see it's a hinge pin that opens and closes. And it's just got some little like um, plastic baubles that are extra shiny around the side. So that's pretty fun. This is honestly probably not a very valuable pin, but it reminds me of a special time that I had in Disney World. And so I'm not looking to trade this. I just want to keep this as a memory for myself. This here is a limited edition Doorways to Disney Tiki Room pin. These are limited edition of 4,000, which is not a very low limited edition. However, in a few years when these become harder to find, um, I can see people seeking out these pins because they are just really, really cool. For example, this one has a slider element. This guy slides over. And then this door opens up to reveal the tiki room inside and that's the scene there where they sing let's all sing like the birdies sing um so that's really fun so that's got a hinge aspect and a sliding aspect to it I personally love the Doorways to Disney series, so even though they're not particularly rare right now, I will be looking to trade for other um, Doorways to Disney series pins with other people because I just really like these. And finally, here's a pin that I recently acquired that is actually probably quite tradable and quite um, collectible. And this is a Zootopia pin, which is limited edition of 500, only 500, from Hong Kong Disneyland. There are a few things that make this pin more tradable and probably more valuable than the other two I just showed you. Number one is it's a low limited edition number. It's only 500 of these in existence. Number two is it's Zootopia. And Zootopia right now is a very hot commodity in pin trading. Everybody wants Zootopia pins. Um, the movie was quite popular all over the world and uh, everybody loves Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde, especially me. So these are kind of a hot commodity and lots of people are hunting for these on the internet right now. The third thing that probably makes this pin a little bit more collectible and tradable is the fact that it was exclusive to Hong Kong Disneyland Park. So not only was it limited edition, but you could only get it in Hong Kong, which means all of us here in the United States, or anyone that's really not in Hong Kong, would have to get this through somebody who was able to pick up the pin in the Hong Kong Disneyland Park. So because of its low limited edition number, its exclusivity to Hong Kong Disneyland Park, and because it's a popular movie, Zootopia, this is definitely the most valuable or most collectible pin of the three I just showed you. So in summary, the three different tiers for pin trading is pin trading in the parks, cast member lanyard pin trading. That is probably your least expensive entry point. However, that is the place where you are most likely to find fakes, unfortunately. The second tier is rack pins or open edition pins. I think those are great for memory keeping and those are a fun kind of risk-free, less expensive way to pin trade and pin collect. And the third and final tier is the limited edition or rare pins. And I wanna say enter that hobby at your own risk. Um, there is a little bit of risk of fake pins and counterfeit pins out there. It does exist even at that high level. Um, but I also just wanna warn you that your wallet might be hurting after you get into that rabbit hole. So just go cautiously and uh, try to pick pins that you really like rather than looking for what's valuable. Whew, that was really a lot more talking than I thought I was going to be doing, but um, like I said, there's a lot to talk about with these pins, so if you have questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I might do a pin Q&A video sometime in the near future. And I also wanna just leave you with a few resources that I really enjoy kind of keeping an eye on um, for pin information and pin trading tips and tricks. So the first thing I wanna let you know about is a website called pinpicks.com. Pinpicks.com, I will link it down below. Pinpix is this incredible, incredible database full of basically pinpicks, photographs of 
like almost every Disney pin in existence. And it also includes information like whether or not it's limited edition, how wanted it is in the pin marketplace. If it's a pin that is typically faked or there are counterfeits of it out there in circulation, there's usually information about that as well. So you can find a ton of great info on pin picks and you can also make your own pin trading account and actually trade with other users on there. So pin picks is kind of my number one go-to spot for pin information. Another smaller website I'd love to make you aware of is DisneyPinsBlog.com. DisneyPinsBlog.com. It's not an official Disney site. It's run by a couple of Disney pin collecting fans, but they are really good at keeping you very up to date on the latest pin releases. They also have a podcast and they also have a YouTube channel that I highly recommend checking out. So I'll link to them down below. It's DisneyPinsBlog on YouTube and DisneyPinsBlog.com. And finally, there are two more YouTubers that I would recommend that you check out. The first one is a smaller channel. She's called Zippity Doo Disney, and I absolutely love her pin videos. She posts her pin mail. She also does great videos on pin collecting tips. She's got some really good ones on how to spot a fake pin. She also just did a great video on how to properly mail a pin in a pin trade. So I will link to her down below, Zippity Doo Disney, right? Zippity Doo Disney, that's right. And the final one you've probably heard of, the YouTube channel Everything Disney Pins. These ladies are kind of where I learned the ropes of pin trading. They've got a ton of pin trade vlogs, pin trading information. They also have their own website. I think it's everythingmousypins.com. So I will link to those guys down below. Oh my gosh, that was such a mouthful today. I hope that somebody found this helpful. I know a lot of people are kind of curious about getting into the Disney pin trading and Disney pin collecting hobby. If if you have questions, like I said, leave them down below. I will do the best I can to answer them either in the comments or in a future video. And thank you so much for checking this video out. I will be back this weekend with another vlog. I'll be back with more pin unboxings and Disney hauls in the coming weeks. So hit subscribe if you like this kind of content. And I will see you guys again real soon. Have a magical day.